everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Drama Surgery Podcast. In this episode, I am covering a 2023 airing drama, at least as of the time of this recording, titled Usokon. This is a Japanese drama that I am really enjoying, so I thought it would actually be a good drama to review for this episode. The general gist of this drama is that Yei is the female lead, right? Yei loses her job. Um, she is dumped by her boyfriend and also no longer has a place to stay. And it is in this time in her life where she's down on her luck that her childhood friend, Takumi, offers to house her and basically give her a job. But the job is to be his fake wife, right? He wants to be in a fake marriage because he needs it for like impressing the boss of a big company that he wants a contract with or has a contract with. And so that's basically the synopsis of this drama, right? First thoughts on this drama, I mean, I was going to watch it regardless because I am a huge, huge fan of a lot of Japanese drama. Mainly because, I don't know, they're just really watchable to me, right? When it comes to, like, their romance dramas, they're generally very short and sweet, right? Usually, nothing past 12 episodes, and that's even, like, a long one. (laughs) Usually, it's, like, 6 or 8, right? So, I mean, if the female lead is watchable, I am probably going to watch it. And so, this show is good in that, that it gets better and better. Um, and so I've actually been really, really enjoying this drama. Really, this is going to be a short review because I just really want to talk about like the things that I like about this drama, but nothing in depth. Um, it's just a very fun drama to watch. And I think if you're looking for something on your downtime, this is actually a good one to watch. It's not, it doesn't really require any investment, I feel like. Um, and so that's good. Um, the one thing I like about this drama, um, when I started watching it is the male lead's love for the female lead. So Takumi's love for Yae um, is very very interesting and something I kind of wasn't expecting because in the first episode when he's asking her to be his wife fake wife of course I just thought he was doing it okay actually maybe I should have known because I mean there were a lot of flashbacks and stuff like that so I should have kind of sensed that that was where this was going but honestly I just thought that he was doing it because he needed that fake wife for the boss of this company he wanted to get like a contract with and so that's where i thought his character was coming from right but then i find out that like by episode two he's really in love with her he's been in love with her his whole life basically right and he's the kind of person that he's not able to be honest about it right so he's kind of pretending most of the time (laughs) when he talks to her right he's actually really really in love with her and that's the good thing about this drama as time progresses and we watch more and more episodes, you see just how devoted his love for her is, right? How much it's unwavering in a sense and um, how long this feeling has been there. I mean, he's wanted to like propose to her years and years and years ago. So this is something that he actually really wants. Not actually because of the contract he could get from the boss of the big company, but because this is his way of kind of bringing her to his side. And that was just really good. I, I just really like that. His, his love is just so encompassing. And, you know, he wants to do everything for her and with her and everything, which is so sweet. And so that's the one part of the drama I really, really like. The male lead just is so in love that, you know, you can't tell him anything. <laughs> so that's something I like about, about this drama. Then another thing I liked um, was how every episode featured a certain person that they basically had to convince that they were married, right? And so it was just seeing the fun and watching them plan this, like, fake marriage scenarios together that was just really it was really fun to watch right you know the planning to achieve that goal um brought them closer in a lot of ways um and i just like that i like there's a, there's almost something should i say procedural about it if you guys you know watch any american tv show like police cop shows like um medical shows you see that sense of like every episode has a different person a different theme or a different basically story that they are telling and so every episode they are trying to convince someone or do something right there's a goal at the end that they have to achieve right and it's just fun to see them walk towards that and then another thing i really like about this drama is that there's just something about the fact that yae knows takumi well that works given that they are trying to like put on a show of a fake marriage because she's actually someone that's known him since childhood she can actually speak to that and so it's easy to convince people you know that they are actually 
in love and together, right? Right. Also same with Takumi. Um, when it comes to yeah, he just knows so much about her. Just also because he's in love with that, right? Um, but there's just something about seeing that, that I'm like they're actually perfect together, even if they weren't like faking it, right? And so that's just something I like when they inject that moment of their childhood or something they know about one another. That is just so sweet, and I just really like that. It makes them seem like these two people in their own world that's like different from everybody else's world right and so that's kind of why i knew that they would not get busted easily because honestly even though like remy and masaki like takumi's friend know him in like today's day and you know they've been with him for a few years right yai knows a lot of things from the past right uh when they were younger so she she kind of beats them in some way right and so yeah that's just something that makes me feel fuzzy inside i don't know i just really like that then another thing i really like about this drama maybe actually the biggest reason and uh, one of the reasons that is making me like committed to this drama is that i really like yai's personality um she's a very fun and watchable female lead she isn't silly or you know putting on an act she isn't like a bumbling idiot <laughs> right um which a lot of dramas have that character and i just i dislike it so much um she's a grown adult um that has her own issues but regardless she's i i feel like still a strong person in her own way because she has this self-sacrificing personality um it's definitely detrimental to her, right? That's kind of how she loses her job and how she's dumped by her boyfriend, right? In that she's not willing to fight for anything. And I have seen people mention that maybe she just has a low self-esteem. That's where that's coming from, right? But honestly, I think she's just also built like that, right? And it's been like this since they were kids. There's a scene where Yai lies and gives a balloon to somebody, like a kid when she's younger, right? Um, Because the kid is crying that he lost his own balloon or her own balloon right and so she gives hers to the kid right and lies that oh she has another one or something like that and that's something i think it's just from the goodness of her heart i don't think when she was a kid she also had like huge self-esteem issues i just think there's a sense that she's just unable to see people be sad right which is also a bad thing <laughs> like for you to be that invested in other people that you are willing to inconvenience yourself is very rare and while it's kind of okay that's still the goodness of your heart there's a sense that you can't overdo that right and so that's really where yai's issue is is that she overdoes it in that she's so self-sacrificing that it is detrimental to herself right and you see that especially when she interacts with Takumi's ex. Takumi's ex is somebody that obviously Takumi was not really into, as the ex mentioned that. It was clear that Takumi was into Yai like from the very beginning, and even the ex knew that, right? And still, Yai is so affected by the tears and like the the pain that <laughs> the ex shows her that she thinks that it's better if she maybe stays away from Takumi, right? That's somebody that is not able to kind of control her nature in that she just doesn't want to be the one to hurt people, you know? And I think that's where it becomes detrimental. But at the same time, I think it also serves to make her a good person, right? Her ability to turn his friends, Takumi's friends, into her friends is quite amazing, right? She's able to bond with them in a way that I don't think they were expecting and in a way that kind of convinced those friends that Takumi is really in love with this girl and, you know, they are really married. And I think that's the thing about her personality in that, like, it has the bad side and it has the good side, right? If she can just control it a little bit, I think she would actually be a very, very good person. She's the kind of person that should go into, like... Okay, actually, maybe not. I was going to say maybe she should go into, like, psychology. But she's the kind of person that they would fire (laughs) after a while because she was too invested in the lives of her patients. So maybe not. But regardless, I think her, like, line of work is in the more altruistic side. And she would definitely thrive there better. But, yeah, I think her personality is great, actually. It's just... It's interesting to say the least and it's one of the more interesting ones I've seen how it's portrayed and mentioned and you know referred to in this drama. Um so I really really like that they gave us such a highly complicated personality, I feel like at least. Then moving on to the next thing I like about this drama, it's 
actually the role reversal when it came to Takumi's friends. In the sense that when you're first introduced like this anger that his friends display, you assume, or from the way things are portrayed, you assume that, oh, Remy, the girl, is the one that's in love with Takumi, and the male friend and his colleague, Masaki, is actually the one that is kind of not as invested, maybe doing it because Remy is also his friend kind of thing, and so that's why he's also kind of suspicious. But then when you get to the episode where Masaki is like the one that's like <laughs> trying to find out whether they are actually a couple, you see the change that Masaki is actually the one that is in love with Takumi, right? And you see that Takumi holds a very special place in his heart because he kind of fits what Masaki has kind of been looking for in a person, right? And so he's actually very in love with Takumi. Um, for Takumi's goodness and, you know, just moments where Takumi is by his side. So that's something that was interesting to me. Um, and I have to say, I think my favorite episode till this date um, is that episode with Masaki. He was able to bond with Yae in such a way that I was actually very shocked. And it was actually so so pleasing to watch like it was there's just something about how they bonded that you know yeah is actually somebody that could come up to being his very good friend right um and i just i really liked that episode but yeah it was interesting to me that he was the one that was actually in love with takumi whereas remy when it comes to our episode you realize that she's actually not in love with takumi she just sees or considers takumi as like a kindred spirit she believes he is somebody that she can be close to and she's comfortable with him, right? She considers him genuinely as her best friend, right? And so she's scared that Yai is going to take that away from her. And that was just interesting to me because, you know, I had assumed that she was obviously in love with him, but really I think she was just genuinely, like she mentioned, right, in the previous episode, leading up to her own episode um, where she's like, the person they're trying to convince she says that she's actually mad that takumi did not tell her about this like marriage right and so she was actually that she wasn't lying about that she was genuinely pissed about that one fact right because i think she considers him you know her best friend and she saw it as kind of an affront to their friendship and yeah as this person that was going to maybe take that away because i mean she's a female right and takumi is male so there's a sense that maybe they can't be friends but again yeah is amazing and she's somebody that is able to just i don't know draw people to her and bond with people and so she's able to bond with remy and i think actually that's another friendship that is going to be good for for remy right because remy needs that female friend in her life as well i also think she'll be a great great friend for yai because as i said yai is very very self-sacrificing right and I think she needs that push, somewhere to like snap out of it and be like, stop that, right? You see that in that moment where they are with Masaki and Kento and they are talking about something and Yai makes a comment that Remy's like, no, that's not right because, you know, she sees that self-sacrificing nature in Yai and she wants to crush it. She's like, yeah, no, right? And so I think that friendship will be good for Yai as well right because honestly i feel like takumi cannot help her with that he loves her too much to be able to kind of criticize her in any way so i think having a female friend that is able to kind of direct her back to the right path because if you have to like say this i hate to say it but like remy is more on the selfish side (laughs) right um so actually they balance each other out can bounce off one another and maybe turn out to be decent people um not that remy is like selfish selfish but like she's more self-serving actually that's the word i should have used she's more self-serving so which is not a bad thing so i think they will actually do well as friends um and so i was really happy about that as well but yeah that was one thing that i really liked that they did with the story and then the last thing that I really liked about this drama was actually the character of Kento. Because actually, even before they showed him and he came back, I already knew he was going to be like a good person. <laughs> and that's the good thing about this drama is that nobody is a villain, really. And so even before he came on the screen and Takumi was thinking of him as a villain, I knew he wasn't going to be one. And he proved me right. Um, he is a really good friend to both Yai and Takumi. And I mean, I don't know what his reasoning is for giving way to Takumi. 
given that he also liked yai but whatever the reason i support <laughs> and i am glad for his character because he's able to see both of his friends in a like honest light like he knows them for who they are and so maybe he just thinks that takumi loves yai more maybe that's it um but yeah his character was also really really good to watch and i'm really enjoying seeing him also in this drama but yeah that's really it for my review of this drama it's a very easy to watch drama i actually don't want it to end that's how good it is but honestly it's just been a relief you know just a distressor drama um nobody is too mean um it's all just like fluff and people healing and growing as individuals kind of um we'll see if i will grow <laughs> because you know she's been that way since she was a child so it's difficult to change who you are but regardless um it's a drama that i think everybody should watch if you're not watching it it's just gonna be 12 episodes that's the beauty of this drama and just japanese dramas in a whole they are not long it's 22 like like minutes um each so it's very quick to watch and so yeah i highly recommend thank you guys so much for listening to this episode and i'll see you again next week bye